I mean, technology is sort of a huge driver of the language of the works that I'm interested in making. And so I, I think of technology as, as a series of languages and perhaps with photography as Latin. Hi, Matt. Um, thanks for joining us today. Um, we, uh, you're part of the first of a series of um, discussions we're having with artists in their studio, given that artists are spending a lot of time in their studio at the moment, given the pandemic. So we thought it was a great opportunity to talk to different artists we work with um, about what they need in their studio. What are the central requirements? So what is the central requirement for you in a studio? Hey, Jono, uh, thanks for having me. The central requirements, uh, the, the main one's probably time. I've been thinking about that just, and that's, you know, this time at the moment, although there's, you know, it's causing so much misery and it's, it's such a negative in so many ways, there, you know, it's allowing a lot of time and a lot of thinking, a lot of, you know, a lot of trying different things that, you know, maybe you normally wouldn't have the time to do so fully. So. Yeah, I, I think time is the main one. To my mind, you are the epitome of a multidisciplinary artist, given your practice has ranged across, you know, installation, film, you know, video. So I'm curious about how that has impacted in terms of what you need in a studio, or as again, has it not changed that much in terms of the kind of, I guess, things that you need at your fingertips? Or has the creative process been exactly the same with all those different um, uh, forms that your uh, art practice has taken? It depends on, you know, I thought a lot about when I, you know, began with photography and my father was a very keen photographer. So I was sort of was, you know, four or five years old in the dark room and being lifted up as a child and seeing the film develop and the paper develop and that kind of magic of photography very early. But I also started thinking about what I was interested in. And I don't think anyone's born interested in a particular medium. And I used to think about what it was about photography that I was interested in. And it's that idea of mechanical reproduction and a machine kind of being given a set of instructions and playing out its nature to produce something that, you know, a person can interact with or read or, or make sense of, you know, so the negative in a photograph is really a machine readable thing that makes a print that a human can read. And so that idea of a kind of, the interaction between a machine and a set of instructions is something I've followed through my practice. And that is really the core of that idea. So that idea might, as you say, might express itself in a performance that involves machines or a printmaking process that involves photography or printmaking or 3d printers or film. And so all of those things to me are really the expression of the same practice and same process and same idea. It's just they manifest slightly differently. As technology has changed, has that changed your practice at all? Yeah, I mean, technology is sort of a huge driver of the language of the works that I'm interested in making. And so I, I think of technology as, as a series of languages and perhaps with photography as Latin. And so one of the ideas early on in photography is the history of photography is really defined and written by its technical advances. I mean, when you read the history of photography, it really, and when you look at the way images have changed, they are really at the, you know, the, the technology has been the driver of those, you know, there's been cultural and um, economic and, and social influence as well in that. But I, I kind of think of each technology as a language and I learn I almost think of it as I learn as little as I need to about, you know, uh, you can literally just never leave the house if you are going to learn everything about every technology. And so I, I learn as little as I need to, to make each work that I want to make. And each work kind of has a suggests a language or suggests a technology. And then I will kind of see what language that wants to become. So does that mean that you need to bring experts in? You know, if your if your process is to learn, is it is it is it to learn as much so that you can guide them, yeah. or or do you learn enough so that you can actually operate the technology yourself? Yeah, I mean that's exact. I mean, really, that's exactly the process in a nutshell. Is that I learn? I sort of have an eighty twenty rule that I learn about eighty percent. Well, what I, what it's sort of when I look back over the you know, over my practice, what I've found the pattern is, is that it's about, I, I make, I get most things 80% of the way there. And then often I'll bring in a, a 
sometimes 100%, but often usually 80%. And then I'll bring in an ex expert who is usually a friend or somebody I know or someone whose work I respect. Um, and we'll hang out and get the other 20% of the way. So Matt, um, a project that we have been involved, Experimenta and you uh, uh, have had, well, what a relationship that's now stretching over five, five plus years um, is the project of Drone Opera, um, which uh, has, been quite, has been wonderful to see how it has evolved and developed over that time. Can you tell us a little bit about the starting point for a drone opera and why we went to a suburban shopping centre late at night to a car park? Yeah, no, I remember that. That would have been 2014, I think, um, in, in Ringwood late at night. And it was a, a group of sort of friends and hackers who would sort of get together and build their own drones and race them around the car park at night. And I was sort of very interested in the idea of camera movement, that's really where that project came from and my interest in drones. My, a lot of my video projects are sort of cameras on steady cams or motorbikes or people. Sort of over time, as it moved through Experimenta, it became more of a live performance project. Uh, and sort of adding narrative and adding duration to that camera movement and the movement of the drones. I mean, I think originally it might have even been the idea of sort of a drone ballet, like sort of dancing with the drones. And then we found that the drones and the dancing was sort of a little bit too similar of a language and we moved to um, it being an opera. And um, it's actually been one of the great creative experiences of my, of my you know, practice. I really have enjoyed this and had so much fun and we've worked with such great people. project in some ways is it had always intended to become different things we never wanted to do the performances again but we wanted it to have a life again and so it's sort of become a cinema a single screen cinema version a two channel gallery work a three channel gallery work and it was really just about at each point what did it need to become and how did we deal with what we were giving up from the previous medium and what we're gaining from the next medium so when it moved from cinema to or the screen to from live performance, you know, we, you and I talked a lot about how do we deal with losing a body in space and mm. how to, and how amazing that can be, particularly with the singers in space, you know, in front of you, the opera singers in front of you. And what do you replace that with and what does that do to narrative and what does it do to duration? The whole idea as it's been evolving over the each iteration is what, you know, is the sort of where to from here idea, you know, what, what can we do with this version that we couldn't do with the last one? What do we keep from this and what do we discard and move on to, for it to become something else? So we're always with the idea of it becoming something else and evolving. And so then moving through all those iterations from live performance to gallery to film has been a really exciting process that in some ways I probably won't get the opportunity to do again. I mean, this is, it's unlikely I'll get an opportunity to do a project that is this broad and this, you know, that goes into so many different ways. And then talking about, you know, now there being an opportunity for Ars Electronica to do a sort of a more virtual version of it. That's a kind of a whole realm that I guess when we did the performances, we never would have imagined. The idea of these big cinema screens with the big speakers, it was very phenomenological. It was a very bodily experience. You went, your body in front of these screens and in front of these speakers had a very different relationship to the work as it did in a live performance or it did when it was a cinema project at the Sydney Film Festival last year. And so I'm really looking forward to what we can do together in terms of taking that to a kind of a more virtual level and what do you then replace the phenomenology of those bodily experiences with in terms of narrative or duration or process. Yeah, yeah, no, me too. And I'm also really looking forward to um, seeing what else you unearth um, through your time in this studio that we may well uh, get to experience in the years to come. Thanks for your time today, Matt. Thanks, Jono, that was fun.